Hello everybody. So today's lesson, lesson 4.1, our title is Multiplication Patterns with Decimals. And the essential question that we're going to be answering, we're able to answer by the end of our lesson is, how can patterns help you place the decimal point in a product? Hmm. Okay, so let's look at the Unlock the Problem. We're on page 167 of the fifth grade Go Math textbook. Cindy is combining equal size rectangles from different fabric patterns to make a postage stamp quilt. Each rectangle has an area of 75 hundredths of a square inch. If she uses 1,000 rectangles to make the quilt, what will be the area of the quilt? So each rectangle is 75 hundredths of a square inch. She's going to use 1,000 rectangles. So <clears throat> I could just mu multiply 1,000 times 75 hundredths. But there is a pattern when we multiply by decimals that will help us. So for instance, if we had just one, one whole times 75 hundredths, well, we know any number times one is the other number, right? So there's just 75 hundredths. If I multiply by 10, look what happened to the decimal point. It went from 0.75 to 7.5. All right. If I multiply by 100, look where the decimal points wound up. It's now at to the right of the 75. It's moved two places from its original position. It originally was 0 0.75. When I multiplied by 100, it moved one, two places to the right. So if I multiply by 1,000, the decimal point moves one, two, three places. And because there's only two numbers in 75, we have to add a zero. So 1,000 times 75 hundredths is actually 750. So basically, as we multiply by increasing powers of 10, how does the position of the decimal point change in the product? Well, the decimal point moved one place. Okay, so let's go back up uh, and let's put those in terms of powers of 1. So I can rewrite 1 times 75 hundredths as 10 to the 0, right? We don't have a base 10 there. We only have one whole. So 10 to the 0 is equal to 1. Okay, and that, the decimal point didn't move at all. When we had 10 to the first, right, we had one zero, so 10 to the first, or the first power of 10 times 75, the decimal point moved one place to the right. So we got 7.5. In 100, we have the second power of 10 times 75 hundredths. And this time, the decimal point is going to move two places to the right. So 75. And 1,000 is 10 to the third, or the third power of 10, times 75 hundredths. So this time, we're going to have to move the decimal point three places to the right. 7, 5, 1, 2. I have to add a 0. To get 750 or <clears throat> so that's a fairly simple pattern for identifying where the decimal point goes now place value patterns can be used to find the product of a number and the decimals one tenth and one one hundredth 
Okay, so and it says we're multiplying by a fraction, right? So let's see what happens here in example one. Jorge is making a scale model of the Willis Tower in Chicago for a theater set. The height of the tower is 1,353 feet. If the model is 1 100th of the actual size of the building, how tall is the model? Okay, so we can do the same thing by looking at patterns. When I multiply 1,353 by 1, I get 1,353. When I multiply 1,353 by 1 tenth, look what happened with the decimal point. Because right here, this number, 1,353, while, there, while you don't see a decimal point, there is one always here at the end or after the ones. Okay, so the decimal point, when I multiply by 1 tenth, moved one place to the left. When I multiply by 100th times 1,353, it's going to move two places to the left. Okay, so we go one, two places to the left and wind up being 13.53. So his model is 13 and 53 hundredths feet tall. So let's look at the blue box here. What fraction of the actual size of the building is the model? Well, 1 100th. Write that fraction as a decimal. How do we write 1 100th as a decimal? We write it as 0 0.01. All right. So as you multiply by decreasing powers of 10, how does the position of the decimal point change in the product? So here we're multiplying by decreasing powers of 10. Because we went from multiplying by 1 tenth to multiplying by 1 one hundredth to multiplying by 1 one thousand, so on, so on, right? So when we multiply by 1 tenth, we move the decimal point one place to the left. When we multiply by 1 one hundredth, we move it two places to the left. If I multiply it by 1 one thousandth, I move it three places to the left. So the decimal point So the decimal point moves one place to the left as I multiply by the decreasing power of 10. Just as we discussed here, if I multiply by 1 tenth, I move it one place to the left. If I multiply by 1 one hundredth, I move it two places to the left. 1 one thousandth, I move it three places to the left. Okay. <clears throat> so let's look at example two. Three friends are selling items at an arts and crafts fair. Josie makes $45.75 selling jewelry. Mark makes 100 times as much as Josie makes by selling his custom furniture. Carlos makes a tenth of the money Mark makes by selling paintings. How much money does each friend make? Well, we're going to have to use Josie to help figure out the other two. Mark makes 100 times as much as Josie. But Carlos makes a tenth of the money Mark makes. Okay. So we know Josie made $45.75. We know that Mark makes 100 times as much. But let's use our patterns. Okay. So Let's start with if we only had one. What if we said Mark made one times as much as Josie? Well, that would mean he made 
exactly the same. If we said he made 10 times as much, remember 10 is the same as 10 to the first. 10 to the first power is 10. So we're going to move the decimal point one place to the right. So 10 times would be 457. If we go multiply by 100, the second power of 10 is equal to 100. So move the decimal point two places to the right. So Mark made $4,575. Now Carlos, he makes a tenth of the money Mark does. A tenth. So how do we write a tenth? Well, that's 0 0.1, right? A tenth of Mark's money. Well, Mark's was 4575 Well, if he made one times as much as Mark, he'd have the same amount. But he made one-tenth. So we're going to move the decimal point one place to the left. Right now it's after the 5, because the 5 is in the 1's place. So move it one place to the left, and we'd get $457.50. So Josie makes $45.75, Mark's make Mark makes $4,575, and Carlos makes $457.50. So let's practice this pattern. So again, 10 to the 0 is the same as saying 1. So 1 times 4.78, 4.78. 10 to the 1st, move 1 place to the right. So 47.8. 10 to the 2nd, Move the decimal point two places to the right, 478. 10 to the third, move it three places to the right. Okay, how about B? We're going to start at 38 times 1, and then we're multiplying by decreasing powers, because 1 tenth is bigger than 1 one hundredth. So 38 times 1 is just 38. Again, we know the decimal point is after the 8. It's after the 1's place. So if we multiply 38 by 110, we'd move the decimal point one place to the left. If we multiply by 100, we'd move two places to the left, and we'd wind up with 0.38. We could say 0 0.38. <clears throat> All right, so we're just going to apply those patterns in these in our math problems for this lesson. So let's complete the pattern. What is 10 to the 0 equal? 10 to the 0 is 1. So 1 times 17 and 4 hundredths is 17 and 4 hundredths. 10 to the first, we're going to take the decimal point and move it one place to the right. 10 to the second, we're going to move the decimal point one, two places to the right. So now we're at 1,704. If we multiply 17 and 400 by 10 to the third, we want to move the decimal point three places to the right. One, two, we have to add a zero, and then move it to the third. So the decimal point moves one place to the right for each increasing power of 10. Goes to the left one place for every decreasing power of 10. All right, so let's continue. One times three, three and 19 hundredths. It's the same thing. I multiply by 10, I'm gonna move one place to the right. 31.9 times 100, move it two places to the right, 319. Times 1,000, we have to move it three places, so we're going to have to add a zero. So 
So here's another thing we can look at and say, okay, so we start at three and 1900s. If we take 10 times that, 10 times three is 30, right? All right, so we're gonna be close to 31. If I take 31 and multiply by 10, I'd be at 310. If I take 319 and multiply by 10, we'd be at 3,190. So every time we increase by 10, we're moving the value of the digits to the right one. All right, so 45.6 times 10 to the zero. That's the same thing as 45 and 6 tenths times one. 10 to the zero is equal to one whole. 45 and 6 tenths times 10 to the first. Move the decimal point one place to the right. 456. Okay, times 2, we have to move the decimal point two places to the right. So 400, I'm sorry, 4,560. And in the last one, we move it three places. One, two, three. 45,600. Okay, number four, we're multiplying by decreasing powers of 10, so we're going to move the decimal point to the left. So 6391 times 1 is that number. So 6391. If I multiply 6391 by 1 tenth, I'm going to move the decimal point one place to the left. So I have the same numbers, but I'm moving one place to the left, so it would go in between the 9 and the 1. So my number got 10 times smaller. And then if I multiply by 1 one hundredth, I'm going to move the decimal point two places to the left. And now we're at 63 and 91 hundredths. If I multiply by 1 thousandth, yeah, I would wind up with 6.391. All right, so find the value of n. What number times 3 and 25 hundredths is $325? Well, let's look at the decimal points. $325 times what would move the decimal point two places to the right? Two places to the right. 10 squared, so 100. Number six. <clears throat> One tenth of something equals 89.5. So one tenth of a number it meant we moved the decimal point one place to the left. So one tenth times where's the decimal point in 895? Well, right now it's after the five, right? If I multiply by one tenth, I'm going to move the decimal point one place to the left. So I'd get 89.5. So it's 895. And number seven, 10 to the third times something is 630. Well, that means that we moved the decimal three places to the right. So what would it be if it was three in its original position? Where would, what would the number be? Well, we're going to have to be point six three zero. Because 10 to the third, if I move it three places, one, two, three, I would be at 630. So the only way for 10 to the third times something to wind up 630 means that the original number was three places to the left. Okay. So in a sense, I did the opposite of what it was. So it winds up at the decimal points after the zero because it moved three places to the right.
So put it back in its original position by moving it three places to the left. All right, number eight. A glacier in Alaska moves about 29 and 9 tenths meters a day. About how much farther will it move in a thousand days than it will move in a hundred days? All right, well, 29.9 times 100 and 29.9 times 1,000. Well, here we're multiplying by the second power of 10, so move the decimal point two places to the right. So 1, 2. So 2, 9, 9, 0. We have to add the 0 to make to be able to move the decimal point to the second the second time. Here we're going to move it three times to the right. So I can only move it one right now, but if I add two zeros, I can move it three places. So 29,900. So about how much farther will it move in a thousand days than a hundred days? Okay. So now we need to subtract minus 2,990. Make sure you line up the place value. Okay, don't put the 2,000 underneath the 20,000. All right, subtract, that's zero. I can't take nine from nothing, so let's borrow from the hundreds. 10 tens, take away nine tens is one ten. I can't take 900 from 800, so I'll regroup from the thousands. 18 hundreds, take away nine hundreds is nine hundreds. 8,000 take away 2,000 is 6,000. And two ten thousands take away nothing is two ten thousands. So 26,910 meters more. And number nine. For numbers 9a, through 90, choose yes or no to indicate whether the product is correct. So 81 times 10. 81 times 10, that means we take the decimal point and move one place to the right. 8.1. So no. 33 times 100. Uh, sorry, 33 hundredths times 100. Move the decimal point two places to the right. Yes, it would be 33. Five hundredths times a hundred, move the decimal point two places to the right, we'd have five. So five does equal five. Seventy hundredths times a thousand, that would be move the decimal point three places to the right, seven hundred. No. And thirty-eight hundredths times ten would be move the decimal point one place to the right, we get three point eight. So no. That one is not correct. All right, page 170. What's the air? Kirsten is making lanyards for a convention. She needs to make a thousand lanyards and knows that one lanyard uses one in 7,500 feet of cord. How much cord will Kirsten need? This is what she did. She said one times one in 7,500. Okay, so that's right. Then she went 10 times 1 in 75 hundredths and got, oh, she just multiplied 10 times 1. She didn't move the decimal point. So this should have been, should be, move it one place to the right, should be 17.5. And then on 100, she'd have to move it two places to the right, and it should be, 175. If she moves it three places to the right, one, two, three, it should be 1,750. So she put a zero in her problem. So she wrote a zero after the whole number.
he should have just been moving the decimal point. So she wrote a zero after the whole numbers, right? So one, and then she wrote a zero. One, and then she wrote two zeros. Then she, so this was, should have been 175, not 100.75. And so she should have just been moving the decimal point one place to the right for every increasing power of 10. So what should it have looked like? Well, one times one and 75 hundredths. So that's right. And then 10 times 1.75, just move the decimal point one place to the right. So 17.5. When she multiply by 100, she should move the decimal point two places to the right. One, two. So 175. And then 1,000 times one, dot one in 75 hundredths, she'd have to move it three places, one, two, and add a zero to move the third, so 1,750. So Kirsten needs 1,750 feet of cord to make 1,000 lanyards. Now describe how Kirsten could solve the problem without writing out the pattern. Okay, she's multiplying 1 and 75 hundredths by 1,000, or the third power of 10. She can just move the decimal point three places to the right. So that's it for patterns and in, in knowing where to place the decimal point. In our next lesson, we're going to actually work on multiplying decimals and whole numbers, but we're going to use models rather than the traditional method. So in lesson 4.2, we're going to model how to multiply decimals and whole numbers. So until then, I will see you soon.